Oh my God, everybody. I am so excited. And I know Roxy's so excited to be here too for us to talk about this because like this pathway of spiritual awakening and movement in the world, not only is an energy, although everything is energy, but it's also in some of the pragmatic stuff that's been happening in our lives, the things we thought were normal, the things we believed were good for us at certain times of our life. And the conversation we're about to have today on birth control and really kind of moving this through and releasing it through our bodies is going to be a really potent one. So Roxy, I am so happy you're here. I'm so excited to be here and touch on this topic because I've had quite the experience and I'm so excited to share it with others because to say that I was terrified is an understatement. (laughs) Yeah. And I know, I remember we were talking this out, like at the time that this was moving through and I brought this into your awareness of going, girl, like because of the work you've done spiritually, you can no longer have something in your body that isn't in alignment any longer. And we've seen it with food and we've seen it with like, like all different other things. But this was, I think like a pivotal point for you. Like, I'd love for you to just touch on kind of where, remembering where you were at the time where this started to change in your mindset and, and just bring that forth for everybody today. So I've been on a spiritual journey on and off my whole life. The last five years have been a lot more intense and it was probably about, I think it's been almost two years to be honest, when I actually look back, it's been almost two years, but I hit a point in my spiritual work where, you know, I started meditating every day and I was bringing in daily practices and I was really getting in tune with my body. Mm. And as this was kind of coming forth, I kept hitting a wall where I am someone who's very in tune with my energy and with my body, where even when I was having energy work done, when she was down in those reproductive organ areas, um, there was always a block Mm. and I had an IUD. So I had the Marina, the one with hormones and I've been on birth control a long time. I was a teenage mom and was on birth control when I got pregnant in the beginning. Yeah. So this is where the fear comes from because I was on birth control from the age of like 15, 14, 15, I think is when I started. Mm -hmm. Had my son a month after I turned 17, went back on birth control, but went on a higher hormone dose birth control because clearly what I was on wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So as I grew and went into my spiritual work, I felt it in my body. Now, the IUD is not something you typically feel inside your body, but the more in tune I got, Mm -hmm. I was having dreams about it. I started to not be able to feel myself almost. I was tired a lot. I was battling the hormonal ups and downs because this particular birth control I was on made it so that you didn't get your period. And I was on this for five years. Yeah. And the realization, because I'm someone who works within the moon cycles and to realize that that is not normal. No, it is not normal. No. And I hit a point where I brought it up to my doctor. Now my OB that I go to, I love, I have a wonderful relationship with her. She's not the one that delivered my son, but we have a wonderful relationship. So when I brought up to her, you know, I think I want to get off birth control because I feel like my body is rejecting it with all of the spiritual work that I do. And I feel like the, like my body's rejecting it and she's open to the work that I do. Mm -hmm. So she said to me, okay, well, what are you going to do? What do you have in place? And I went, what do you mean? She goes, well, what are you going to do if you take the IUD out? And I'm like, I'm going to do FAM, the fertility awareness method. (laughs) And she's like, you know, that's only 75% accurate. I went, actually, I did my research. So I went, actually, it's 99.9% accurate when done correctly. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I definitely the medical stirred doctor. Yeah, for sure. Go some some yeah. cold feathers, right? Um, and she did, we talked about getting my tubes tied. We talked about, because the idea, and this is a, this is like a really key piece that I had to work through on a physical and a spiritual level here. And this is why I'm sharing this because when I made the decision, like the actual choice to my body's rejecting this, Mm -hmm. it's time to get it out. Mm -hmm. How am I going to not get pregnant? Because let's be real, like 
you know, I was a 33 year old woman. Yeah. Prime. Yeah. Like it's a great time to get pregnant. Yeah. All my friends are having babies right now. No, thanks. I love them, but no. And the fear of, oh my God, how do I not get pregnant? Okay. So I talked to my partner. I'm like, you need to get snipped. Like <laughs> we went down this road of, okay, well, I'm going to get it because I can be in control then. And then when I realized it was a major surgery, yeah. by my tubes, I once again went back to, but I don't need that. Doesn't align with my beliefs in my body. Mm -hmm. I can control this because I can be in tune with it. And when we talk about spirituality and synchronicities, because nothing is a coincidence. Yeah. Once I made the decision, I was faced with fear. Yeah. So let's stop I, here for one second, because I know that we're going to keep going on the story, but let me interject just a little bit here, because I think I just want to pu pulse in the vibration of when we start awakening and when we start really leaning into our spiritual spirituality, our spiritual gifts, understanding our intuition, listening to ourselves, all the things you said about being in tune with the body, our body will purge the things that it needs to remove that are not in alignment with it any longer. So you were feeling that connection because I think this is an important piece. You were already yeah. feeling that resistance from the body of having it in you. Now, some women out there who are on this same type of journey, opening up spiritually, will feel the disconnect of actually taking that pill every single day and their body will reject it in other ways where they'll get different symptoms. They'll get, they will not feel right in alignment, which was me 14 years ago. And I also had an IUD and I could only have it in for six months. I was like, I can't handle this. My body can't handle this. And I knew, and I didn't know at the time. And now with all the research out about birth control and why women don't need it, which I know you're going to lead into that of how you shifted through that. But I didn't understand at the time why I wasn't supposed to be on it. But when I started my awakening, which was 14 years ago, the exact same time that I came off of birth control, I get and understand now why, because of the fact that I couldn't, my body cannot hold it. That's it's with all different manufactured medicines that way. So I just wanted to make well, sure you kind of said that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's a case. And it comes back to listening to your body. Mm -hmm. And that when you're going through the spiritual awakening and when you're starting your journey, it's a matter of getting present in your body and actually listening. Yeah. Because everything you need is inside you and your body is always talking to you. Energy speaks to you. Mm -hmm. It's are you open to listening and are you open to receiving? Yes. So when you're starting your journey and you're, if you're, if you're someone who's battling or debating to go off birth control, trust yourself, mm -hmm. trust yourself. If you feel it's not right for you anymore, yeah. then trust yourself. And for me, education was huge. Uh, yeah. For me, I really deep dove into educating myself on my body in the in the human world yeah yeah um because it's what i what i really realized is that we as women are not taught about our bodies mm -hmm. and when i think back to our journeys in school and the things that our doctors tell us and not not to put down doctors because uh, you know they're here serving their purpose to help heal and work through and help people but in my particular experience it was a way to control the body when really and truly when you stop, when you step in and you lean in, you have control of your own life and your own body. Yeah. But leaning yeah. into that. Yeah. And trust. So like, if we look, really look back and like, this goes to even this IUD experience you went through like five years, no period, when we were built as women to flow every month. And if we are really in tune and our body is in aligned and it's healed and not to say that we don't have other dynamics to move through, we are in tune with nature, meaning we are in tune with the moon. So they call it like in actual ancestral and indigenous world, they call it moon time when a woman is on her period, whereas society has diminished that and to go plug yourself up with tampons don't honor the blood moving through you. Don't honor the process. Try to stop it from happening so you don't get pregnant when all the woman's body needs to shed 
every 28 days, this beautiful membrane into the world to be recycled back into earth. And sometimes we're like, but it's blood. But if you think about it, like it's a rejuvenation for the body. The body is moving it through, healing itself, starting over again. And it's just like nature does. And it's just like the cycle of the moons. And it's interesting that we've been hidden from this. Like nobody talks about this until you start oh, to yeah. work with spiritual shamans and, you know, ancestral work and you tie yourself back into indigenous ways and you start to see the purity of what this really means and is. It's like, wow, like they blocked us from this for so long. And it's not surprising because- of all of the narratives they're trying to hold, A, they don't want more people in the earth and B, they want to control you. So if they can keep you on any medication at all, they want you to do that because now they have a piece of you that they're manipulating. Yeah. 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 Well, and the reality of your cycle yeah. is that it it goes through phases just like the seasons. Yes. So it comes back to earth. It comes back to Gaia, you know, and when you think about your cycle and when you get off birth control, there is a process when you're doing the transition and there's things that you can do to support your body through the transition. Mm -hmm. So there's prep work you can do while you're still on the pill or still have your on birth control that you can do to prepare your body when you're coming off birth control. And what? when it, so did you have any, so yeah, give us some ideas. When I, now I went off birth control and then learned that yeah. there was a process. <laughs> of I made the decision and I went, yeah, I'm done. But for me, like what came through and this, where we come back to intuition, because a podcast randomly popped up on my Spotify shocker. Mm -hmm. Right. And there was uh, it was a nourished with Nina is her Instagram handle. She is a fertility awareness method specialist. I follow her. I love her podcast because she was educational and yeah, I and really we'll learned the show a lot notes too, guys. Yeah. We'll go to the show notes. You'll see her Instagram handle and we'll link up her podcast as well for sure. Sorry. Continue. So when I started to listen to the podcast, I realized there were simple things that we could do that I could do in the morning and through the day to just be in tune with my body. And this falls through with my daily rituals. So basal body temperature, checking your temperature, every morning now like okay like i got this on amazon for like 30 bucks okay not expensive every morning you check it because through your cycle your temperature split shifts and slightly changes and let me ask you a question just for knowledge where do you check your temperature up the hoo-ha <laughs> no, under, my under my tongue under my tongue <laughs> okay under your tongue i Perfect. mean so it's there are easier. some really cool ones you can wear on your arm overnight yeah. But I thought I'm just going to try this option. And I have an app called Read Your Body. And this is not a period tracker app. Yeah. Because there's lots of apps out there that help you track your period. Yeah. But what they don't track is your cervical mucus. Mm -hmm. They don't track what you're eating. They don't have space for journal entries. So this particular app, Read Your Body, is easy to navigate. I will say that. And it's a way for you to just keep track of your body. When does the pimples come in? Because the reality of it, when you're dealing with hormones, your pimples and where you're going to have irritations is from the nose down in the lower half of your face, because that is hormonal. Mm -hmm. So when you have lower cheek jawline, and that's where the pimples are coming, that, that's hormonal. Hormonal headaches can happen. They're usually targeted above your eyebrow in that middle, uh, sorry, mid eyebrow point on the one side. I get mine on my right side. And I usually get this headache about two days after. And it's because when you are on, when you come off birth control, your hormones are all out of whack. Right. Like completely out of whack, unbalanced. So it takes time for your body to regulate again, like anything. Mm -hmm. And I would say it took me a good year yeah, to really kind of regulate my body with my hormones. And I still kind of battle plummets. Uh, like I plummet in estrogen sometimes, the headache comes. Okay, so I just go and eat a carrot. Mm. Because eating a carrot can take that headache away. And when I started experiencing these things, okay, you have a headache. So I'm using essential oils for headaches, not touching it. I'm 
and I'm someone who works with crystal energy and I'm trying to shift this headache. When I realized it was a hormonal headache and I switched my oils for hormonal support, I switched my crystals to support hormones. So I started using more moonstone and uh, even carnelian and garnet. And when I started using crystals to support hormonally, I was able to help shift the energy of the headache because when whenever you're dealing with an issue, you have to get to the root of the problem in order to treat it because otherwise you're just putting a bandaid on it or you're treating your headache with, you know, a peppermint blend and it's not doing anything. Right. So let's go back to, um, you came off of birth control. You started taking your daily temperatures. So what else are you doing consistently to pay attention to how so, it's shifting for you? Yeah. Tracking your cervical mucus. And how do you do that? It is so cervical mucus, every woman has it. It's our natural cleaning system for our body. Yeah. So when you go to the bathroom in the morning, you look at your look at your toilet paper. Yeah. Look at the consistency of your cervical mucus. Now I'm not a professional nor a doctor. I'm speaking from personal experience. Mm -hmm. When you start to pay attention to your cervical mucus and when you're, when you're ovulating, it's like egg whites. Okay. Yeah. So it's slippery. And when, before you ovulate, it's more of a creamy substance. Um, right when you finish your period, it's kind of more like a crumbly, but it doesn't have a smell or anything like that. And it's natural to have discharge as women. Like it's natural. It's our self-cleaning system. Yeah. So when you come off birth control, Tracking your cervical mucus is extremely important because you will not be regular. Mm. And here's the thing to remember. You can only really get pregnant. Your fertile window is three to five days. Yeah. That's your fertile window. Yeah. yeah. Three to five days. But I think how we're conditioned and what we're taught is that you can just get pregnant. Mm -hmm. If you're not on birth control, if you're not protecting yourself, you're going to get pregnant. No, that's, no, yeah, that's not how this works. You can only get pregnant in your fertile window. Yeah. So tracking your cervical mucus when you come off of birth control isn't going to be normal. Like there were some weeks I was ovulating four days after my period. And I was like, what the hell is this? I'm supposed to ovulate mid cycle. What's yeah. going on? But it's your body trying to regulate itself. Yeah. So, so tracking you your cervical mucus, checking your temperature yeah, are two key key yeah so what so the temperature so it increases when we ovulate correct yep and so is yep. there a certain window of percentage that or like a heightened uh, like number that you know of that you work within or and obviously we're going to oh. give the show note details that they can go listen to the podcast too but like what do you that yeah, just give me your insights yeah so I range anywhere from like 30 like 36 to when I'm on my, like right in my fertile window, I maybe will peak to like 38 and this is in Celsius. Yeah. And sometimes you'll get these crazy peaks where you're going to be way higher or way lower. This isn't how you track because this is unbalanced hormones is causing these peaks in your cycle. So you're looking kind of like your base temp. I'm within the 36 point something most days in my cycle. Sometimes I drop to 35, but it's when I'm ovulating that I speak up a little bit and I might go to like 37 point something. So there's small shifts in the body, but this is because your cervical mucus can't always be the, like, it's not always 100% reliable. Checking your temperature of your body is that secondary tool but also helps it be more reliable because your temperature of your body is regulated right regardless of your hormones yeah and it's like the more in tune we become with our body we know like for me like I very rarely wear tampons unless I um I'm on back-to-back -back calls those days with but I try not to so I follow the lead of my body where my body says you need to go to the bathroom I go to the bathroom and it all releases. Like I don't have any problems with any spotting or anything unless I'm not paying attention. Right. And I know that over time um, with this ovulation process too, people can get in tuned. 
but they've really got to start to pay attention to their bodies and listen in here and create these mechanisms inside of their flow, we'll say. Yeah. Cool. Well, and I mean, and you've been tracking and doing this for 14 years. I'm yeah. going to own that. No, I, that's not me. Yeah. I still wear tampons. I wear organic tampons because yeah. even when I tried to drop in, when I got off birth control, I had to pay attention because when I was putting things down in that region and I was wearing pads or if I was wearing tampons or whatever I was using, if it was bleached or not organic, yeah. I had a reaction. Yeah. And like even down to like laundry soap. Yeah. everything shifted for me the moment I decided to come off birth control. Yeah. It's everything, what I can put in my body, what I can wash my clothes in. Now I am very in tune with my body. I still can't track it the way that you do. It's, so I want to really yeah. stress this yeah. because how you track your body is not the norm. No, <laughs> I'm definitely not normal. <laughs> so it's not the norm. So let's mm. like put a pin in that bubble because yeah. I think that gave people a hell of a lot of hope going, oh my God. So yes, you mm -hmm. can, but for the, for most people, it's, it yeah. takes time and, and you have to learn, but to control it. So, um, yeah. I think it's wonderful that you are that in tune with your body and can <laughs> control your cycle. I'm at a point where I can, I track now I have a calendar, I track it and it's cool because when you use this app, it gives you a chart. I track everything to like how my bowel movements are because they shift throughout your period. Mm. When I'm working out, um, I've shifted my workouts yeah, because so to support me in my cycle. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Yeah. Cause that's an important thing as well. Cause I think that, um, and I'm really interested in this. So like, tell me about what that feels like for you by moon cycle and everything too, right? It's all in alignment, all of it. So when you are, at the first part of your cycle, right after your, right after your period, mm -hmm. that is the time go hard, do your hit workouts, do your lifting, your heavy lifting and push yourself. And it's, and, and really get that body moving, get the heart rate up and push yourself harder. Now, as you move into your ovulation time, slow things down a little bit, Pilates, yoga, a walk yeah. and even you can, st and like even still working out and going to the gym, you know, maybe you go to a gym and you do classes and you're doing like an abs and ass class or something like that. Still a good way to do it. When you're on your period though, that is when you, you slow down, you lean into your body and you honor your body because you're honoring your body in releasing and rebirth in what you're doing. So you're honoring your body and what you're eating. You're honoring your body in how you move it. So the weeks that I'm on my period, I skip spin class, which is tough for me because I love my spin. Yeah. <laughs> but I skip my spin class. I tone down. I go for a walk. I do more Pilates. I do more yoga. And sometimes I skip the gym mm -hmm. because I listen to what my body needs in that time and this is the key because everybody's going to be different mm -hmm. um and but when you are on your period you know you, you can use castor oil packs which i know you have a lot of knowledge in mm -hmm. to place on your lower abdomen to help you with cramps you know for me i use crystals i place yeah. crystal grids on my body to help shift the energy and that's when I do like full on tarot readings for myself. And I find I really get in tune and get some messages is when I'm on my cycle. Yeah. Well, it's, I bring the magic in. And that's it. I'm why I'm not surprised. It's the purging of the body. It's the alignment, like the power we don't even recognize and realize that's been diminished throughout centuries is the womb of a woman. That's where life force enters into the world. We birth humans through the womb and we don't I don't think and most of the people probably listening to this maybe never even considered how powerful the womb of a woman is so mm -hmm. when we cycle it was purposefully positioned in our bodies to allow the body to reset every uh, technically it's every moon cycle so every full moon and new moon play a role in the women's movement ovulation and in their moon time 
And if your body is healthy and in alignment and not to say that you're not healthy if you're not, but there's something missing in your world. If you are not in rhythm with the moon, um, you know, all the distortion, everything that we've been through in life. And I don't want to diminish anybody that's not in that consistency, especially if you live in Canada, it's really hard. Um, but if you move to Costa Rica, it gets really easy, you know, <laughs> you know like, <laughs> right? the purity of the energy, but we, we don't even realize that how powerful that is. Like, and we say this often, it's like the, when a woman has an orgasm, that's her direct connection to universal alignment and divinity. So if once you're like literally about to orgasm in, into the world and bring that energy in through your body, if you start to manifest through that orgasm and call the things in, it collapses time quicker. I know oh, it's, see. it's the power yeah. there. So like the power of birth control is diminishing that vibrancy inside of the woman's body. Right. And well, and yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's talk about that for a second, because you have been off birth control for a long time. I have been on birth control for a long time. Yep. I did not realize that how I was feeling was caused from my birth control coming off of it. I sleep better. Mm -hmm. My libido is higher and I already had a high libido. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah, remember this is um, podcast. We talk about all things on here. Yeah. <laughs> but like, and I'm not as bloated. I don't have those breakouts. I'm not numb to feeling. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to go here. Gut health. Yes. Okay. Gut health, yeah. because this is, this one is, this is the hardest piece I believe to, to move through is the gut health is repairing the gut because all the years of birth control has destroyed my gut. Yeah. So, and this is why when I got off birth control, I found someone that I resonated with to follow. And I signed up for her six month program because I was a 30 something year old woman and I didn't know anything about my freaking body. And I went, what the fuck? Yeah. Like how, like I have a teenage boy, so I didn't have to go through, like, I didn't have to have that talk with him, but the realization, and that's, I think what hit me the hardest was I'm in my thirties and I don't understand my body. Mm. I don't understand the signs that my body is giving me. Yeah. I like, and, and I don't, know my cycle what do you like okay so like like I eat certain foods throughout my cycle and that's going to help me I work out certain ways through my cycle and that's going to support me and oh my god mind blown yes it does yeah and this comes back to start to learn about it and get some education on it and you will feel confident because I, I know you were on the receiving end of a lot of my phone calls when I was coming off birth control going I don't want to get pregnant Oh my God, I don't want to get pregnant. Like I cannot get pregnant. Like you don't understand. Like I know, like, like this can't freaking happen. And, yeah. you know, regardless of the energy that you put towards that or not, it's having the confidence yeah. to know your body enough to track it, to know when that fertile window is, because here's the thing, the peak of your cycle, isn't your period. No, it's, it's your ovulation week. Yeah that's the peak of your cycle but we have churned it to focus on the period yeah of course. and the bleeding and the release and the menstruation so it's about aligning and what you will notice is that once you start to get your body in like once you start to develop a regular cycle you will sync up with the moon now you might not get period on the full moon but Take a look because I guarantee you, yeah, you will fall in the cycle and then you can track it also through the moon or you can use the moon and the energy that aligns with the moon to support you through your cycle and what you're doing in that phase. It's like, you know, I was talking today, literally I was on a beach walk today with some of my girlfriends here and I was saying to them, we don't even understand the intricacy of the earth and how beautiful everything is aligned. Everything has been purposefully positioned in this beautiful, intricate puzzle piece. And the same thing as us as humans. And we are meant to use the earth as fuel, as, as connection, as a guide. 
right? So if you think about when you get lost in a forest, you go look for the North Star or you look to see where the sun is rising. The earth tells us stories. So just yeah. like our bodies, we were created in alignment with the moon. And sometimes that baffles our human brain because none of us have been taught this. Nobody read a book on this in school. Nobody taught us. Like we go yeah. to sex ed, like how do you put a fucking condom on a peanut on condom on a banana in fucking sex ed? And they tell you about the two different types of like infrastructures in the body. Here's the penis and here's the vagina. And, you know, they come together and you make babies, but they never actually talk to you about what this actually means and how to step into it. And it's been diminished. And now they don't even talk about it now in the fucking schools. The sex ed is about what's your fucking pronoun instead of actually educating these people on how to really honor it and how to have the men honor this cycle. You know, my shaman um, says to me, like my husband, when I first started dating him, he got used to having some blood maybe somewhere and things like that when I was on my moon time, because she honors that flow of being a woman in that space and honoring it. And that's a natural thing where some men are like, sorry, I'm not touching you. You're on your moon time, you know, like, and I'm like, I want a real man that is not objective to anything. And some of you may not agree to that. That's totally cool. But like, I, I, I don't want there to be a hiccup, especially when I'm on my period, because it's like there's a potency in the hormones there that I'm like, let's fucking go, you know? Oh, but yeah. like, let, like, I, I'll share. Yeah. <laughs> my man knows where I'm at in my cycle, not because I'm open and talk about it daily. He yeah. knows my rituals. He sees me walking around with a the thermometer in my mouth some days, yeah. but because of when I'm like, or that the sex that we're having, or he's like, Jesus, like, I know, like, when you come off your period, I gotta, yeah, buckle, like, up. <laughs> buckle up. I also know that when you're on your period, dark chocolate needs to be in the house. Yeah. And that is when you read books and drink more tea. And that is when you do your witchy woo woo stuff. Well, yeah, I do witchy woo woo shit all the time. But yeah, this is me with my, you know, specific tarot read, or this is when I have my baths and put my body butters on and exfoliate my body and it's honoring the body yeah and it's it's truly it's truly honoring the body yes and coming off birth control you you will notice a shift in the body in your sex drive in your cervical mucus because you may not be having any cervical mucus i mean i had an iud i didn't have any cervical mucus yeah for five years like no i mean before that i was on the pill so like i'm like we're gonna, we're gonna go like 16 like you know i'm like close to 20 years i was on birth control yeah and when i got off birth control i remember going through my first cycle and i'm like i wiped myself one day and i'm like that was so slippery what the fuck is that oh what is that <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember this hmm. and I'm like, okay, okay. I need to clearly learn. And what I love about um, this particular woman that I found, Nina, is like, she talks about all of this on her Instagram. You can go to her page and you will find all kinds of education. I don't know how many of her posts I've saved as reminders to what to eat or, and just to what to do to support my body through yeah. the cycle. Well, and I think this is an important subject and why I wanted to bring you on today. Like I, like you don't do fertility work. You don't consult no. women in this at all, but it aligns in the spiritual awakening and as mm -hmm. we move through and really exposing the truth of some of the things that we've been conditioned to think, feel, and believe in life. And when you started accelerating your spiritual awakening, you found that you couldn't hold this any longer, just like the tampons you couldn't wear, like I have some here that are just purely like organic cotton. That's all that's at them, right? And there's a couple of really amazing brands. Um, and if you feel inclined to reach out to me, please do that. Like just send me a DM if you want the links to them. Um, but like, I barely wear them. Like, that's why I was like, I'll have, I have a couple boxes extra just in case like I need them. But, but it's like amazing to see what the body does. So as we heal the spirit, and we look at the spirit, honor the spirit, we work through our trauma and our emotions, we change our mindset around things and start seeing things differently, the body adjusts with that. So it was such an important piece, I think, in this collective of energy we're moving through in the podcast episodes and moving through this conversation that we discussed this. And I knew that you would be a perfect example on it because of the fact that you 
personally went through this experience in your awakening spiritually. So, well, and what I've learned is that, I mean, I have a fairly regular cycle, but the human body is the last to catch up through any kind of growth phase that we go through when we're, when we are going through massive shifts, our body, our human body is the last to catch up. I also know that when we are going through these massive energetic shifts, your body needs to purge. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I've noticed Mm -hmm. is that sometimes when that purge comes, when I've gone through an energetic shift, I'm bleeding. Yeah. And I'm experiencing blood clots, but I don't have the headache. I don't have the hormonal. I'm not bloated. I don't have the pimples. So that's when I'm like, okay, this is when I tap into my body and realize, okay, this isn't part of my cycle. This is my body purging. Mm -hmm. And I remember having this conversation with you because, you know, we both kind of went through a purging of sorts within a span of two weeks. And for me, it showed up in bleeding. And I bled for like four days and then I came out of it and we're good. Yeah. I'm still tracking my cycle. I'm still tracking what happened. Yeah. You know, am I due to get my period next week? We'll see. Yeah. I think it'll be, I'm feeling all the, I'm feeling all the feels of it's coming, but it's not here yet because, you know, I pay attention to the body and the energy that I'm feeling. And that's the thing I think we really want to just hit home today on this podcast is that your body is a beautiful, beautiful mechanism on its own. It can heal itself. It is so in tuned. Um, We do not need to diminish it with things and put stuff in our body for it to work. We just need to pay attention and listen. And when we have headaches or when we have pain, our body is speaking to us. Something is moving through that we're either blocking, that we're not stepping into, and all of that. So the whole birth control mechanism was a way that they could control women's intuition. Even like you even just said, like you were diminished while on birth control in that light. And when oh, this was a key it. piece. Yeah. That helped me open up. Yeah. It's one, th- and I've always been intuitive, but there was some, there was that block. Yeah. And there was also that block in my sacral chakra. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting now so, where you're at even and what you're working through today, even compared yeah. to two years ago about how you wouldn't be able to embody all the things you're embodying without. Yeah. And it's, this. I think the key thing to remember when you are in a position where you're debating, yeah, if it's showing up for you as a question, yeah, lean into it. Yeah. Because there's a reason it's showing up Mm -hmm. and there there, yeah there's a reason there is and Roxy does a lot of work um and she's leaning more into work of helping people really lean into their intuition and follow this and she does it in more spiritual ways but this was one pragmatic way that showed up for her that she can really speak to and lean into that so we'll obviously have Roxy's contacts in the show notes as well Um, she's a crystal therapist. She also sells crystals, but she does a lot of energy work. Um, if you're local to the Ontario region, like in new market area, you know, she hosts workshops every month and things like that. They're not aligned in birth control per se, but you know, there's one coming, (laughs) you never know what may happen, right. Or wherever she's being guided to lean into, but it's like one of those things that we really need to recognize is that we are this beautiful being that's been placed on earth in this beautiful perfection. And I'm not saying everyone's perfect, but the mechanism we work within is a perfect, well-oiled machine. And it's us as humans that fuck shit up, right? And oh, it's yeah. us that like take the things or listen to that thing or that environment changes us or our parents do this and all the stuff that we go through in this experience, which is amazing. We love it. We do. We love the journey, you know, and I say that sarcastically yet. I say that with grace and love as well, because I get and understand the dynamics of this, but part of the reason why I, the podcast dropped through me was so we could have these random conversations of all the things that we're moving through in this collective of energy, as we continue to own our light. And this is one 
getting impurities out of the body, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it's important to just remember that you're in control of your own life and your body. Yes. So potent. You're so if I would ask you, yeah, I always ask everybody, like, what, what does light warrior mean to you? And I think it's important that we speak that into the universal world, just in, even though the conversation we had today technically is still a light warrior conversation, but I'd love to just get your feedback to kind of finish off the podcast today on that and then get your last end thoughts of what you just want to kind of speak out loud into the ethers. Well, when it comes to being a light warrior, a light warrior, it's all about embodying your truth and embodying the light. Because when you connect back home to your soul and you really start to know who you are and understand your purpose and your mission here, and you don't need to be a spiritual leader, teacher, coach in order to be a light warrior. Mm -hmm. We have light warriors all around us. They don't even know what they do, but it's their impact. It's their commitment. It's their drive. It's their caring nature. It's their compassion for other people and how they are here to serve and help. So when I think of a light warrior, I think of someone who brightens your day. I think of someone who's owning who they are and stepping into that potency. And if that means rustling some tail feathers, then that's okay because you're owning your truth. And I often say, you know, don't diminish your light for anyone else because you are who you are and you have a mission here. Yeah. So when you step into that and when you just really connect with your soul and you're, and you really start to lean in really beautiful things can happen mm -hmm. and life gets a hell of a lot easier. It definitely does. And like, that's like the mantra of it all, you know, like I, I, in the training we were on on Friday, so Roxy's in one of the programs that I'm leading. And I said, like, I got interviewed on a podcast and she says, how do you know that you're owning your truth? And I just said, life gets easier. Mm -hmm. It really does. It does. So I just want to encourage everybody. You're feeling this, this served you in some way, shape or form. Help us spread the word. Roxy's Instagram handle will be in the show notes. Tag us on Instagram. Our objective of this podcast is to help serve people. So we need to get it out. So I just highly encourage all of you uh, listening to this. If you love it, do a review, snap a photo of this, you know, wherever you're listening to it on and help us share the word. But I want to pass it back off to you, Roxy, to say like, how do you want to complete this podcast episode today? What is the last message you'd like to serve the collective of energy? <laughs> Start listening. Remember, drop into your heart and get present in your body. When a question arises and when you're facing something, anything, drop in, get present in your body and listen. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to highly encourage Roxy to do a YouTube video on what that actually means to drop into your body so that you can actually go to her YouTube channel and she'll explain to you exactly what that means. Because some of you might be like, I don't, what does that mean? Drop into your body. So give Roxy a week. Um, if you are <laughs> listening to this, like literally within a few days when it launched, um, just give her about a week. And if you are listening to this six months down the road, it's already there. So just check the show notes. You can go to her channel. And um, just so you guys are aware, that was me highly encouraging her to create video content for YouTube, which I have been encouraging her for a while to do. So now I just put it out into the ether on purpose while we're still recording. So she does that. <laughs> oh, shocker. <laughs> shocker. Oh, man. So obviously, we're going to have Roxy back on the podcast somewhere along the way. Um, every single time I get to chat with her, whether it's on Instagram uh, lives or whether we do some other kinds of things, uh, her evolution as a spiritual being is always moving through and evolving. And a lot of her pathway is leading in other pathways. So I just love to be able to bring her back and reconnect. But Roxy, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for saying yes uh, to my crazy ideas all the time and trusting uh, that we would just be able to deliver whatever it is that we delivered today and just help to serve humanity in the way that we did. Hey, that's what it's all about is just speaking our truth, owning our power and helping and guiding others. Yeah, it is. And with that being said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you guys all in another episode of the Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. Yay for us.